Welcome, Ben Mama. The Acorn Archimedes, and more specifically the BBC A3000, was the machine that replaced the BBC Micro, which was the first home computer that many children in the UK came into contact with due to being found in most of our schools. The Arc, as it became known, was never quite as popular as the Beeb, but still carved itself a nice niche in the market and was arguably more important from a historical perspective due to its ARM processor. Whilst known for being more of a serious machine, it could also play games, and in this list we're going to be looking at a selection of the most interesting ones that remained exclusive to the machine. The thing with more quirky and obscure computers like the Archimedes is that they often have a lot of exclusives, which makes their library a lot less mainstream and a lot more interesting. This means that you get a lot of different titles to choose from when making a list like this, so rather than play through the entire catalogue to sift out the wheat from the chaff, I relied on a lot of my own personal memories. You see, the Archimedes is actually a machine pretty familiar to me, as not only did I use one extensively in senior school, I also had a friend who owned one, and I would regularly go around his house to play on it. I'm sure that there are lots of excellent exclusives that I've left out here, so if you're an Arc owner and have your own suggestions, then please leave a comment, so I can look at including them in a potential follow-up video. But for now, sit back and enjoy as I reveal 10 amazing Acorn Archimedes exclusives. Acorn has set the standard for educational computing, supplying virtually every school in Britain. Now it introduces the next generation of educational computers, the BBC A3000. BBC computers are now regarded as an indispensable resource in schools covering all subjects in the national curriculum. Our children need powerful tools to face the challenge of the future, and the BBC A3000 will be playing a key role in their education. Give your children a head start. By having a BBC A3000 computer in your own home, they will build on the solid foundation of the school's teaching and let their imaginations run free. But this is more than a classroom computer. The whole family can take advantage of its power and flexibility. It's easy to use, even for the youngest and newest of users. Everyone will use the word processor. You will have the confidence to change your mind as often as you like, improving text, checking spelling, and putting your thoughts into letters, essays, and documents precisely as you wish. The advanced technical features of the BBC A3000, which make it the fastest machine in its class in the world, also mean it's ideal for many business applications. And the PC emulator will allow you to run your office programs at home. And after hours, the BBC A3000 will be there when the family relaxes, whether the mood is for spectacular games or a quiet spell of creative harmony at the keyboard. Entertainment, business and your children's education and future, all with the advanced BBC A3000 home computer, The Learning Curve. Every single system out there has a clone of Breakout or Arkanoid, and the Archimedes is not alone in that regard. The classic bat and ball gameplay of Atari's 1976 arcade game was later improved greatly by Taito with the addition of power-ups and different brick formations. It's a concept and genre that is still as popular today as it ever was, and it's not hard to see why, as sometimes simple gameplay is still the best. Fireball 2 follows the exact same formula as the Arkanoid titles, destroy the different brick formations, collect the power-ups, and then move them to the next stage. The first great feature of this Ark game is that it allows you to play with a mouse, giving far more sensitive and ultimately more precise controls. Another nice feature of this title over the Arkanoid games is the ability to combine power-ups. For example, you can have both lasers and a big bat at the same time. This adds a new element to the game as you try to discover the best combinations, 
and then remember the colours you have to collect to get them. Fireball 2 has lovely colourful graphics with a really clean look to them. There is also some really good in-game music to accompany the action too. Fireball 2 is a great arcade game for the Acorn Archimedes, in fact it's one of the best and should be sought out by any self-respecting owners of the historic 32-bit computer. Hamsters is the sequel to the equally mental Dinosaur, which also comes highly recommended, and was brought to us from Cult Archimedes Software House Gamesware and programmer Tom Cooper, who has a reputation for coding madcap games for the Ark. The game's plot is explained in a lovely intro sequence before you start the game. It involves around a planet of hamsters who are looking to conquer the universe, every bit as wacky as the rest of the game. You control the titular hamster, a furry little fellow armed with a huge mallet. He uses this giant hammer to smash all his rival pets as he makes his way around the various levels. Some of the other animals take multiple hits, like the tortoise whose hard shell takes several bashes of the hammer to crack, but others, like the cat, will just explode into a pool of blood and guts. The mallet is also used to propel your character onto other platforms. If you smash it on the floor, it causes you to leap in the air and this tactic must be mastered in order to progress through the game. Graphically, Hamsters is absolutely fantastic, with cartoon quality visuals being the order of the day. The sound keeps up these high standards with some great intro music and even better in-game effects. The digitised screams of the enemies are a joy to the ears and only increase the fun. Hamster is every bit as cute as it is gory, and also every bit as good as it sounds too. The game might be a touch linear or repetitive in parts, but it's so much damn fun you really won't care. horizontally scrolling shoot em up of the highest quality, Blowpipe is very reminiscent of Konami's Gradius franchise. The cavernous levels, long screen ratio and enemies all owe a lot to those classic arcade games. That's not to say that this is a straight clone though, as Blowpipe uses an energy bar rather than a just one hit in your dead system though, which is fortunate given just how many enemies there are on screen. And it also has its own unique power up system too. The attack waves are pretty much endless and it's almost impossible to shoot them all, so you need to dodge many of the aliens as well as their bullets if you're going to get very far. Shoot enough of the aliens in a formation and a power up is released, but you have to grab it quick otherwise it will float off the screen. You might have already guessed from this that the game is pretty hard, but it's one of those where you can learn the patterns and progress further each time. The visuals here are excellent, if a little bit generic in nature at times, but it's the amazing soundtrack by the legendary Matt Furness that's the standout feature here, and easily one of the best I've heard on the arc, up there with the likes of Xenon 2 and Pac-Mania. The Archimedes is desperately short on games of this type sadly, so that makes Blowpipe an absolute must have for all owners of the machine.
This unique little arcade adventure for the Archimedes reminded me a lot of the kind of games that Codemasters used to put out back in the day, like Dizzy and Cosmic Spacehead, and is a real gem for the home computer. The rather silly plot of the game that also pokes fun at itself explains that you're a bug hunting robot sent to stop an alien invasion because these evil aliens are bugs you see. But for some reason they forgot to arm you, so you need to find objects to help you eliminate the foes. The most common way of taking out your targets is by dropping objects on them. This requires both expert timing and positioning, which is where the game's key gimmick comes in. The unique feature of Bug Hunter in space is the gravity system that means our hero can walk up walls and across ceilings, which becomes a key part of how you play the game. On some levels you also need to activate self-destruct mechanisms and then locate an escape pod to get out of there before the countdown ends. Its combination of cute graphics and puzzle oriented gameplay is a real hark back to those classic titles I mentioned earlier and you can't help but smile as you play it. Like so many other Archimedes games though, I really do wish that it had some in-game music. The original Bug Hunter game is also well worth seeking out too, especially if you enjoy this one. One of many great games given away for free on the cover disc of Archimedes World magazine, Enigma reminded me very much of the classic title arcade game plotting. This puzzler requires you to match up blocks by the symbols that appear on them. You do this by shifting each block left or right without getting it trapped. Sometimes you have three or more of the same block and this requires some very skillful planning in order to get them to match up at the same time. As the levels go on you find cunning traps, lifts and blocks that cannot be moved out of the way. Each level is also timed, so you can't spend too long thinking about your next move. If all the puzzling gets too much for you and you need a break, then simply make a note of your level password and you can just return where you left off, once your brain's had a rest. An info panel on the left hand side shows all the important details you need to know, like how many lives you have left, how much time you have left, your score and the number of blocks you need to clear. Graphically the game is quite simple as you'd probably expect and there's no music sadly, which I feel really enhances a game like this. But the digitised sound effects and speech samples are brilliant. Enigma is one of the most addictive games out there for the Archimedes and will provide hours and hours of hair pulling fun. Anyone remember the Freescape series by Domark? Vast 3D romps like Total Eclipse and Driller that required you to explore and solve puzzles in equal measure? Well, Ixion is very much like an updated version of those games. It's also one of many homegrown Acorn games by the god of ARC programming that is Tom Cooper. It was originally released by Software 42 in 1992, but the game is now freeware thanks to the kind folks at Imparo who now own the rights to it. You're roaming a vast polygon world that is seeped in radioactivity. As you explore this alien planet, you must watch out for patrol ships and guards that want to take you down. The map will help you find your way around, and your laser weapon will assist you against the enemies. The handy Geiger counter that beeps as you roam around warns you when you are stepping into highly contaminated areas. Unfortunately, without any instructions of any kind, I found it rather difficult to work out exactly what I was supposed to be doing and why. It took several plays and a lot of guesswork to get anywhere. 
That said, I was incredibly impressed by the fast and smooth 3D polygon engine that opens up the world around you and the atmospheric sound to accompany it. What I've experienced here seems to be the makings of something very good indeed, so hunt it out by all means. Just make sure you have the instruction manual available. Following the common theme of Archimedes games generally being inspired by more famous games from the arcades, Apocalypse is basically Atari's classic battle zone on steroids. The game sees you trying to cleanse a series of planets of the Raconans, a sentient computer life form that has grown out of control and taken over the galaxy. The enemy forces are both ground and air based so you'll need to keep moving to avoid enemy fire. Thankfully you have some very useful missiles to take out the enemy ships attacking you from above and your laser cannons will make quick work of the ground based foes. Like Battlezone, an on screen radar will help you track down the alien installations and clear the levels much quicker. Your tank shields will also help prevent the enemy from taking you out instantly. This is important as you get to select what part of the war zone you land in and this means you can quickly find yourself under attack. Graphically Apocalypse is a real tour de force, with its smooth flat shaded polygons, vibrant colours and slick presentation. The game's engine also moves at a fair old lick too, meaning the game is not as slow paced as many similar 3D tank games. We should probably mention the sound too, as Apocalypse features some really loud sound effects that add to the frantic action quite nicely. This is definitely one of my favourite Acorn Archimedes games. One of the best multiplayer games on the system, and indeed one of its most well known games too, Chocks Away is a World War I flight simulation that uses some very slick 3D polygon graphics to set the scene, and is often compared to the Commodore Amiga classic Wings. In the game you pilot a British Tiger Moth aircraft on various missions against German forces. This plane carries a single fixed firing machine gun with infinite ammunition, but does have limited fuel so you'll need to return to the airstrip from time to time to keep this topped up. The missions here involve a mix of targeted ground based attacks and shooting down enemy squadrons. The German aircraft all have different levels of skill, so some will be much harder to shoot down than others, and various tactics will also need to be learned to avoid their attacks. As the missions are loaded from disc, 4th Dimension also put out data discs for the game with new challenges on them, as well as an all-in-one compilation that includes all these in one great value package. The 3D visuals here are absolutely stunning and up there with the very best on the home computer. The sound effects are realistic and suit the game perfectly, even if it is a bit quiet at times. If you already own an ARC, I'm sure you know this game isn't essential, but for those who don't...
Gauntlet is arguably one of the best arcade games of all time, especially as far as multiplayer coin ops go, so it's only right that the Archimedes also got a clone of the Atari Classic. In fact it has several, also see White Magic 1 and 2, but Castle Blackheart is definitely my favourite. The idea here is exactly the same, to make your way around the dungeons, collecting the treasure, grabbing the keys to open doors and eating any food that you find along the way. One difference from Gauntlet though is that in this game you can't destroy the enemy generators. This means that you have a constant supply of bad guys trying to duff you up and the impetus is definitely on you to keep on moving rather than holding your ground until you eliminate every foe. The enemies don't spawn in anywhere near the quantity that they do in Gauntlet however, so this isn't too much of a problem. One nice feature of Castle Blackheart is that it has level passwords, so you can return where you left off. But one not so excellent feature of the game is that it's one player only sadly. Given its inspiration became famous for its multiplayer action, that seems like a big miss here. Graphically the game is pretty average, there's not really a lot to it though, and the sound likewise, although there are some nice digitised effects. Again, this isn't a genre that's well covered on the arc, so Castle Blackheart fits that gap in the library rather nicely. Remember the classic 1983 Namco arcade game Xevious? Well, Alarion for the Archimedes is almost the exact same game. They copied almost everything here from the firing system, one button for ground shot and one for air, to the spinning metallic baddies and lush green landscapes. It does give you more range for your shots than Xevious did though, making it a little bit more forgiving in some regards, but this is counterbalanced somewhat by the overall high difficulty. One really weird thing about the shooting here however is that it looks like you're firing out spinning bones. I kid you not, just look. The one thing that you really need to take notice of here is the H and F branded bases. You have to dodge the first of these but the latter actually acts as a restart point if you manage to hit it. There's also a little cheat here too. If you manage to land 8 shots on an F base it gives you a special power up that makes your ship invisible. Usually the game is nothing particularly special staying quite close to its inspiration. The audio isn't up to much either, with some reasonable sound effects but no music at all. Thankfully it does play very well though, there aren't that many shooters for the Archimedes, so Hilarion is a welcome addition to the library. Interestingly, the game later received an unofficial port to iOS, which I'm sure you're all aware is somewhat the modern successor to the Arc with its ARM based technology. Some of the great seats of learning in Britain. From today, there's a new one. This is the seat, and this is the new learning curve from Acorn, including the latest version of the BBC computer used in 85% of schools, so you can master word processing, get help with the national curriculum, have fun, or get down to business. In fact, it's everything you need to get on with computers. Call Freephone Acorn Computers now. And that rounds up my look at 10 amazing exclusives for the Acorn Archimedes. Can you think of any other exclusive games for this quirky home computer that should have made the list? Or do you think some of these games are unworthy of inclusion? I always love to hear the thoughts and views of my audience, so please get typing in that comment section. Before I go though, I must thank all of my little patrons to continue to support my channel and make videos like this possible. 
However, I must give special thanks to following patrons in particular for their much appreciated pledges. Mitchell Valentino, Grady Haynes, Neptune, Sethe Robinson, Carl Olsen, Ozzy B, D Vaughan, Dos Gamerman, and Electron Star Collapse. If you also want to help support all my creative endeavours, including this YouTube channel, then please go and check out my Patreon right now. You can get access for host for extra content, including downloads, exclusive videos, creative insights, and much more besides. I've been the Laird, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you all again for another video very soon.